That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, this one did happen a couple of days ago, but it was so good I couldn't pass it up. You know, we, we don't really, uh, we weren't really able to get to it yesterday because we have the shorter shows on Wednesday, but I, I just had to bring this one up. President Trump actually walked out of his press conference on Tuesday as a result of a really dumb question that was asked, and it was clearly antagonistic. It was clearly trying to get under his skin and, and poke at him, and it, I guess it worked because he got so agitated that he actually walked out. So here's the clip of that. This is a question that was being asked of the president by a journalist for CBS News, Weijia Zhang, I think is the way to say her name, Weijia Zhang. Anyway, so here it is. Uh, yeah, go ahead, please. You said many times that the U.S. is doing far better than any other country when it comes to testing. Yes. Why does that matter? Why is this a global competition to you if every day Americans are still losing their lives and we're still seeing more cases every day? Well, they're losing their lives everywhere in the world. And maybe that's a question you should ask China. Don't ask me. Ask China that question, okay? China. When you ask them that question, you may get a very unusual answer. Yes, behind you, please. What, sir, why are you saying that to me, specifically? I'm telling <laughs> you. I'm not saying it specifically to anybody. I'm saying it to anybody that would ask a nasty question that's like that. That's not a nasty please question. Please go ahead. Why does it matter? Well, that's totally Okay. Uh, anybody else? Please, go ahead in the back, please. I have two questions. No, it's okay. But we'll you pointed to me. I have two questions, Mr. Next. President. Next, please. But you did. You called on me. I did, and you didn't respond, and now I'm calling on Sorry, I just the young lady me. in the back, please. I just wanted to let my colleague okay. finish, but can I ask Ladies you Ladies and gentlemen, please? thank you very much. Appreciate but it. Thank you very much. And there he goes. He's walking right off. Well, there's a lot of good to unpack in that particular clip. First of all, it's an objectively stupid question. Why, why is this a global competition to you? Why are you comparing other countries to how we're doing on the testing? How else are you supposed to measure that? Like, I've been doing a lot of state-by-state -state comparisons. Do they assume that I hate everybody in Kentucky and Georgia and Tennessee and Florida and Texas because I'm comparing how Alabama is doing to it? No, it's not, a, it's not a competition for me. It's just, it's a pretty good gauge of seeing how well we're doing. So it's a really dumb question. And moreover, it's very obvious the reason that Trump saw fit to push forward with that talking point, the reason that he is comparing America to other countries and saying that we are doing better, which objectively we are, by leaps and bounds, it's not even close. I mean, we've been out doing people for about a month now on testing, and we're actually doing even better than that if you do it compared by population. So, I mean, we're just blowing everybody out of the water when it comes to testing. And the reason that Trump was showcasing that is because for weeks on end, all the media said is, we're not doing enough testing, we're not doing enough testing, South Korea is doing more testing than us, which was, you know, True, maybe in the first couple weeks of this thing, but it hasn't been true since like the beginning of April. But anyway, so they it's actually been longer than that. But they, they kept pressing this talking point with the Trump administration is failing and we're not doing as well in America because the other countries are just surpassing all this testing. Even though it wasn't true, Trump was just laying that to rest and saying, look, we're destroying everybody else on testing. It ain't even close. And then they're the ones that were pushing for that. And they go, well, why is it a competition to you? You can't win with these idiots. You can't win with them because to them, it was always about destroying Trump. It was never about getting more testing. It was never about finding the truth. It was always about figuring out something to talk about that makes Trump look bad. That has been their goal from the start. It doesn't matter that Trump is obliterating everybody else on testing. And I shouldn't say Trump, it's America as a whole. His administration is helping with it, but it's really America as a whole when it comes to testing. But because they, they can't give him a win, they can't admit that America is doing anything better than any other country. I mean, the, the left has this mentality that America is the worst place in the world for some reason, uh, which is stupid because...
obviously the greatest country in human history. Because of that, they have this mentality that they always have to bash America, and then when Trump shows them the stats and figures with an overwhelming tsunami of data that shows that we're out-testing everybody else by leaps and bounds, they go, well, why is it a competition to you? You idiots are the ones that were upset about it. You were the ones asking the questions. I am reacting to you, and you're the ones that have the gall to be like, oh, well, why is this a competition to you? There's still people dying. What? Shut up. I, frankly, I understand Trump's frustration on this. I, it's impossible to deal with these people that are constantly moving the standards that can't even come to admit when you do something right, even if, when they were the ones requesting it. They can't admit that the man does anything good, even when they were the ones saying that, hey, Mr. President, you need to focus on this. This is something that's really important. And then he does, and I go, well, why, are, why are you making it a competition between everybody? You can't win with these people. You can't do it. And that's why he gets so frustrated with them. I will say, though, that it is also an objectively bad answer. That isn't the way that President Trump should have handled it. I'm not saying that his frustration was in any way unjustified because... I mean, it makes me bleed from the eyes seeing this, too. I, I get it. Trump was well within his right to be ticked off at them. But he didn't handle it in a great way because why, why don't you ask China? Well, the question was about wh why you're making a competition. I would have preferred him to go on a rant about how backwards the media is, actually kind of the way I just did. That probably would have been better, quite honestly. But he, he tried to deflect and make it about China, which isn't wrong. I mean, it is the freaking source of the virus. I don't think that they're really making it into a global competition, uh, especially when you, I mean, they're the ones that started the fire in the house, I guess, to, to put it metaphorically. But it's a weird thing to, to say to ask China that question because China's not really making it a competition. I don't know. So it wasn't the best way to handle it, but the other thing that is really funny about this is when he does talk about China, the reporter there acts as though it's very out of Trump's character to talk about China, because they made, they tried to make it, because she's an Asian American, they, they tried to make it into some kind of racial thing that he was talking to her about China because she's of Asian descent, and what's really hilarious is that she doesn't even catch on to it. She doesn't even believe that it's somehow racist or it was somehow targeted at her because she's Asian. And you can tell if you watch the video, for those of you who were just listening on the radio, what happens is she actually sits down, she sits back, she is done with the question, she's prepared to just basically yield the floor to whichever the next reporter is. And then all of a sudden you can tell by the look on her face and by the way that she pops up real quickly that it dawns on her, wait a second, I'm Asian. I can use this to say that Trump was racist. I mean, you can just watch the gears turning in her head. That, that was it, because it didn't even come off to her as a racial thing until all of a sudden she's like, wait a second, I can use this for ammo. Then you can see the eagerness with which she's like, why did you say that to me specifically? Acting like Trump doesn't talk about China every 10 freaking seconds? There's a reason that if you download one of the apps that has a, you know, like tr different sound bites of Trump saying things, and, and there's several of those like on app stores and whatever, that if there's ever a compilation of Trump saying things, one of the things that's always on there is him saying China 10,000 times. He's been doing that since really before he even started running. I mean, Trump was blaming everything on China even before 2015 when he announced his run. I remember listening to him on the morning on Fox and Friends talking about how China was screwing us, which, you know, wasn't wrong. But the point is, they act as though this is a new development and, and Trump goes, huh, Chinese person. I bet I can blame China on this. He's been blaming China for this thing since the beginning. He's been blaming them for basically everything else since before the pandemic started. So I love how you can just see that this lady doesn't even really register that, it, uh, that it's racist herself until all of a sudden the, the wheels start turning. It's like, wait a second, I'm Asian. I can use this against him. Oh, man, it was just funny. But the sad thing about this is, because let's talk about the real victim here. And I'm not just saying this because she's an Alabama native, even though she is. And, and I actually, um, I, I've never met Caitlin Collins, but we've kind of run in the same circles. Alabama native Caitlin Collins, who works for CNN, had a question. And you kind of feel for her. 
because she didn't do anything wrong. She didn't ask a dumb question. She just happened to follow the person that did, and Trump was ticked off, and so he's like, you there. No, no, you know what? Screw you. I don't, I don't want to talk to you. I actually feel kind of bad for Caitlyn. She didn't do anything wrong. But anyway, there you have it. Uh, I do, you know, shout out to, to an Alabama native there. But if you need any further proof that this journalist was clearly trying to antagonize the president by asking the stupid competition question, here was a tweet from her, and I just I just started following her because of this thing, and this was one of her tweets earlier. Remember, she is a White House correspondent, so she kind of follows the president around. This was one of her tweets. Uh, there it goes. Okay, yeah, so this is a tweet from CBS News's Weiji, uh, Weijia Jiang. And in it, she says, currently traveling with the president as he delivers remarks to workers at the PPE distribution facility in Allentown, Pennsylvania. The Trump team playlist was blaring before he started speaking, including Macho Man and Billie Jean, and he criticizes the press back there. I... I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. Like, why are you picking on the man's playlist, especially with Macho Man and Billie Jean? Like, those are actually pretty good songs. I, I want to kind of give props to Trump for that, uh, putting in the Village People and, and Michael Jackson. I mean, that, that's about as, as good as it gets right there. That's, I, I, I could listen to that myself. But, I mean, it just does go to prove that she's just hating on him because she doesn't like the guy. And trying to play gotcha with that question, which first of all didn't work, and second of all was just dumb. You could actually put in an alternate headline, although it would not fit the left's agenda, that uh, Trump's pre-speech playlist includes gay artists and <laughs> black musical artists. <laughs> you know, village people and Michael Jackson. But anyway. But ultimately what this boils down to is you know that the media, they're not after truth. They're not after getting to the answers. They're also not after the country doing well or being, you know, good at coronavirus. It doesn't matter how other countries do that. They're not, they're not even for getting, like you can tell from this, more testing and more data out there. Ultimately, their goal is political. They don't like Trump. They want him out of office, and they're going to do everything they can to try to jab at him. To them, it's not about journalism. It's not about the truth. It's about a political agenda. And this is one of the most clear-cut cases of it that I've seen since Trump's presidency. And that's saying a lot, considering all we've been through with the media. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives. So I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them. I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.